So today I thought we would do a fun video that I actually recently saw on Haley in Bookland's channel. I will link the video down below. But that video is, she pretty much went through her bookshelf and she picked her favorite and least favorite book herself. And I thought that could be a fun, short little video. I have no nowhere near as many books as her. I only have about four <laughs> shelves worth of books. But I thought that that would be a fun little thing to do to start off the summer. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do today. Okay, can you see the bookshelf? Can you see me and the bookshelf? That is the conundrum here. Ooh, da, 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 da. Okay, we'll do the first three first. I kinda have to duck down, but that's totally cool. You know what, what if I just hold you guys? Are you okay with that? Yeah. Alrighty, so this is the first shelf on my bookshelf. I color code my books. I actually have a video where I went over one sec, let me turn this around. This is so challenging to film, Haley. How did you do this? Here we go. Um, this is something I actually did on video a while back, so I will link that up above if you're interested in seeing me decorate and put together my bookshelf. But for this shelf in particular, the red through kind of orange and yellow, this is hard. I'm going to have to say that my favorite book on here is going to have to be Daisy Jones. And the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Ah, no, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Don't fall. Thank you. Stay. Good. Daisy Jones and the Six is not actually a book I own. This is my best friend Lily's copy that she let me borrow at the beginning of March. And then I haven't seen her since then because of quarantine. So this weekend I'm going to drop it off at her house and see her from six feet away. But Daisy Jones and the Six follows a fictional band in the 70s, I believe. I've talked about this book quite a bit, but it is written as a string of interviews. And I feel like the character development, especially in this book, is phenomenal. The plot is interesting. It shows a lot of insight into the world of rock and roll culture and its toxicity, but also the perks of being a rocker, if you will. And it's based on Fleetwood Mac and I am a Stevie Nicks stan. So yeah, it's a really nice book. I'd recommend it. It's fun to read. You don't really want to put it down. And sometimes, especially in times like these, you just need something that will engage you and piques your interest. Okay, now for my least favorite book on this shelf. That is incredibly easy. That is going to have to be Harry Potter and the Cursed Child by J.K. Rowling, John Tiffany, and Jack Thorne. I include J.K. Rowling as an author of this screenplay very hesitantly because it's very clear that she had very little to do with the writing process because it's far from canon, despite what her Twitter may say. It really devalues a lot of characters I loved, like Hermione in this really sucks. I will say I had the opportunity to see it on Broadway and it was incredible on Broadway to the point where I was able to overlook all of the incredibly obvious horrible flaws. But as a screenplay itself, I remember getting this. I was in England at the time, so it was kind of extra special because like, I was in the world of Harry Potter when there was a new release of a Harry Potter book. I stayed up until midnight to read it because I didn't want to spoil it for myself and I was extraordinarily disappointed. Um, not a fan. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, moving on to my yellow through green through part of my blue books. Oh man, I haven't read quite a few of these actually because I recently bought some of them from thrift books, but oh man, how can I pick between the perks of being a wallflower and Anne of Green Gables? That's just, that's not fair. And then the Hobbit's on here too. And the selection, we love the selection. Hi Marlette, if you're watching, Marlette loves the selection. I'll link Marlette's channel below. Um, I'm gonna have to say Anne of Green Gables. Anne of Green Gables is potentially my favorite classic of all time other than maybe The Catcher in the Rye. I quite liked that as well. Um, Anne of Green Gables takes place in Canada. It follows a young girl named Anne. And Anne is an orphan and she goes to live with the, this elderly brother and sister on their farm named Matthew and Marilla. And it's about all the scrapes and adventures Anne gets into with her friends, all of her imaginative stories. She's just a really bubbly, happy person. And Lucy Maud Montgomery, who wrote this here novel, has an incredible way of writing nature scenes. She talks about nature and the changing of seasons and the progression of time in such a stunning way and it really reminds me of spring so I know we're moving into summer but if you're looking for a bit of a spring read I'd suggest this. 
There is a show based on Anne of Green Gables on Netflix. It's called Anne with an E. My favorite part of Anne with an E is how they pronounce the word tomorrow. Um, I say tomorrow, obviously, but they say tomorrow, tomorrow. It just sounds so posh and lovely, and it just makes me happy. But it's a wonderful series if you want to check that out. It was canceled, which makes me very, very angry. But I feel like it's a good reflection of the spirit of this book. All right, now I need to pick a least favorite book from this shelf. And I'm not really sure what to pick. This is a pretty decent shelf. I I don't usually buy books I don't like, so that that makes this difficult. I'm going to have to sell... I haven't read Moon Over Manifest since I was like in third grade, but it was I remember it being wonderful. So I'm going to have to say The Hidden Life of Trees by Wollenben. Yeah, this was the novel my creative writing class and I read last year for book club and it was actually purchased for me by my creative writing teacher named Moss and Moss's book is about to come out so I will link the link to Moss's book uh, down below. He's an incredible teacher, he's a really great writer and I really enjoy his work. But The Hidden Life of Trees is a non-fiction and it's this author's account of what he's learned about trees in his years as a forester. It's translated from German, which is pretty cool, and it's really calming to read, I would say. The reason I don't like it very much is it talked about trees having feelings, and it made trees, it personified trees to the point where I was like, okay, if this is a little bit too much of a stretch to call this nonfiction. Um, that's something that we debated a lot in creative writing. I was not on the side of loving it, but... It's cute, it's sweet. If you wanna read something totally different, this is not what I'd normally read, I'd, I'd recommend it. Friend Maddie has told me that there is an illustrated version of this book, and I would love to read that because it, he uses a ton of imagery in the novel to talk about trees, how they live, how they're actually a community, and they form roots together. <laughs> um, no pun intended. But I'd like to see the illustrations. I think that'd be really cool. The reason, this book's just, it's just, it just didn't, it wasn't my cup of tea. I didn't find it very engaging, despite the fact that it's definitely, definitely interesting and something unique. We've made it to the blue through purples and some browns shelf. Oh, what do I have on here? I've got Gatsby, obviously. Oh, I loved The Sky is Everywhere, just almost as much as I loved I'll Give You the Sun. I know it's not super popular on booktube. I haven't read some of these. Um, oh man. You know what? I'm Little Women, I adore, and obviously Harry Potter, I adore, but I feel like, no, oh, this is challenge. See, I was gonna pick a Game of Thrones. I was just about to say, like, those two are great, but, but now I don't know, because we've also got Hamlet, which is one of my favorite Shakespeare's. We've also got The Glass Castle, we've got Lucky in Love, we've got The Fault in Our Stars, The Things They Carried. I haven't read this one yet, but this is a retelling of King Arthur from the perspective of the women in the series, which is pretty darn cool. Uh, okay, you know what? At this moment, this will change, obviously, but I'm gonna have to say Lucky in Love. Is this the best book that was on that shelf? Absolutely not. But I read this recently um, during quarantine, and it was so sweet. It follows a girl named Maddie. She wins the lottery, and it's about her adjusting to her new life as a multimillionaire. She also works at the zoo. She's in love with an anteater, and she falls for her coworker named Seth who is Asian American. And we don't get a lot of Asian American love interests in YA romance. So I really appreciated that. This book just made me happy. I listened to it on audiobook at first, and then I liked it so much that I knew I needed a copy for myself. So yeah, for now I'm gonna say this one, just because of the mood I'm in. I've been a mood reader lately. It's a new experience, but I'm here for it, man. I'm here for it. I read a few of Casey West's books. I think I've read of three or four, and this is by far my favorite one. I actually didn't love the last two that I read, which were On the Fence and the fill-in boyfriend, but this one, I thought the side characters were well-developed. It showed good examples of friendship and healthy relationships. It made some 
and made some fun cultural references. We do love a Tony Stark reference. Though my favorite was difficult to pick, my least favorite is not difficult at all. That's going to have to be P.S. I still love you. This is the second book in the To All the Boys I've Loved Before series. I loved the first book. I enjoyed the finale, and I was extraordinarily disappointed with the second book. I almost didn't read the third because I was so upset with how this turned out. I felt like this got rid of everything I loved about the first book. We didn't hear about Lara Jean's thrifting adventures. We didn't really get to dive into her relationship with her sisters. It just felt like a repeat of the previous book, but done worse. I will say though, I love Lara Jean. She's one of my favorite YA protagonists just because I relate to her a lot, but this this book was just filled with so much unnecessary drama and misunderstanding and miscommunication between the characters, and I just, I was not a fan whatsoever, but you know what? I would suggest you give the first book a try. If you love it, suffer through this, because I can guarantee you'll like the third one. Okay, we've made it to my last shelf. It's a little dark down here, I'm sorry. But these are my brown books and my white books and my black books. Um, and I don't have a ton down here, but I'm going to have to say that I know exactly what my favorite book is down here. And that, oh wait, no I don't. Harry Potter y Feliz de Fuego because I haven't done a Harry Potter book yet. Or Speak, but then I saw A Little Life. Good gracious. I'm going to have to say Speak by Lori Halls Anderson. This novel follows Kristen Stewart as a teenager. No, it doesn't. She just plays the character in the movie, and I can't remember this character. Melinda, maybe? Melinda. Melinda. This book follows Melinda for her first year of high school. And the summer before high school, she was raped at a party. And this book is discussing the aftermath of that situation, and it really dives into her psyche. And I really thought it was in-depth. I thought it was a good portrayal of sexual assault. I know it's based on the author's own experiences, and it just felt incredibly raw and unfiltered, and I was really touched by it. Hey, there's a flyover parade, an air parade outside, so I got a mini civilian, small planes, yeah. and they Wait. fly, Shh. I hear them, they fly at different speeds, and there's meant to be about 30 of them. They can only go 150 miles an hour compared to Thunderbirds that are 500 miles an hour. False alarm, but still nice to be outside. Okay, so back to speak. This was a National Book Award finalist. I really enjoy how it's written. I enjoy how it's spaced. I have a hard time reading text that's really closely packed together. And I also like the little mini like subtitles within the book. It's really helpful in understanding little sections. The characters are great. The family dynamic is really accurate and interesting. And I just generally really love this. Okay, now I can barely see, but let's see. My least favorite book down here. I actually haven't read a lot. I still need to read Shroud for a Bride, which I got at a craft fair. I believe it features a disabled character. I need to read The History of Jazz. I need to read this... Heinlein book that I got for free. Um, but I think that my least favorite book down here is actually going to have to be Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. So Elizabeth Acevedo was actually supposed to come to my school uh, in April for a discussion about Poet X, so all of us were able to pick up a free copy in the library to prepare for a conversation with her, which I think is super cool. I love when authors actually interact with their audience. I think that's really important and really cool. And keep keeps the discussion alive, but I was not a fan of this here novel. This book follows Xiomara, which, who is a Dominican-American girl, and kind of just, her, it follows her life. She's having a hard time, she doesn't have a ton of friends, she has a hard time with her mom specifically, she's having internal turmoil over her religion and what she truly believes in, and it's also kind of a love story. She turns out to really like this guy in her class, but she's not supposed to date until she is much, much, much older. I Okay, this book is written in poetry. It's written in stanzas, 
and that is because the character is meant to have a creative outlet, which is poetry. But I actually felt like the format detracted from the story, like it didn't help in any way. If anything, it made it more muddled and difficult to follow. I also just generally didn't love the storyline. I appreciated the representation and the diversity because I hadn't read a character like Ziamara before. But apart from that, like it was just very boring and I, I didn't want to pick it up. I do really want to read with The Fire on High by Elizabeth Alcibido though. So I can't wait to give that one a shot. I've heard good things and I just think this one just might not have been my cup of tea. Okay, so those were all of the books on my shelf today. I have, of course, those in my TBR pile, but I didn't want to put them back, so <laughs> that's all I got. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, maybe got a recommendation or two, and I will see you all. Bye-bye.